Eating disorders are unfortunately an everyday reality for 9% of America's population. 9% doesn't seem like a big number in the slightest, but that averages out to be 28 million people. You probably know or have known someone with an eating disorder. Pretty much everyone knows about anorexia and bulimia, but there's a new eating disorder on the rise that just recently got its name. It's called diabulimia. Diabulimia is whenever a type 1 diabetic refuses to take their insulin in order to lose weight. As someone with diabetes and who has many peers who have struggled with diabulimia, this topic hits pretty close to home. Unfortunately, DB is not automatically recognized as an eating disorder, yet. But that's why I chose to do this topic, to spread awareness. But in order to really know what diabulimia is, we must start with type 1 diabetes. According to the CDC, type 1 diabetes is whenever your pancreas doesn't make insulin or makes very little amounts of insulin. Insulin is a hormone that helps blood sugar enter the cells of your body where it can be used for energy. Without insulin, blood sugar can't get into the cells and, bu the cells and builds up in the bloodstream. High blood sugar is damaging to the body and causes many symptoms and complications of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is usually diagnosed in children, teens, and young adults, but can develop at any age. Now, what happens when a type 1 diabetic does not take their insulin? The excess glucose will build up and spill into the urine. This drags excess water into the urine, causing, causing frequent urination and thirst. In ancient Egypt, there was a document that mentioned people with fatigue, weight loss, and sweet-smelling breath. They referred to it as the wasting disease. Because people literally, literally wasted away from the inside out. Not being able to treat the wasting disease or what is known today as type 1 diabetes. Now that we have an understanding of what T1D is, we need to get a more in-depth in identification of what diabulimia is and its physical and mental effects. How diabulimia works is whenever a person with T1D neglects to take their insulin or blood sugar for periods of time in order to lose weight. How does not taking insulin lead to weight loss? It's simple, ketoacidosis. Ketoacidosis occurs whenever there is not enough insulin to turn your excess glucose into energy. So the human body will start to go to other resources like fats, tissues, and eventually your muscles. Some of the physical effects of DB is cessation of menstruation, irregular heart rate, nausea or vomiting, frequent urination, bladder infections, rapid weight loss, dry skin or hair, and blurred vision. The scariest physical effect of diabulimia is death. If someone with T1D continues to neglect their insulin doses, they could be hospitalized into a coma and eventually die from it. Just like the physical effects, men the mental effects are just as dangerous. Eating disorders cause physical distress, emotional avoidance, and low self-esteem and fixation on weight. Losing weight becomes the most important thing to someone with an ED, and they would do anything to achieve it. Now, what are treatment options and way to help your loved ones or who are maybe struggling with an ED? If you notice warning signs of an eating disorder in a friend or family member, it's important to speak up. You may be afraid that you're mistaken or you'll say the wrong thing or you might alienate the person. However, it's important that you don't let these worries stop you from voicing your concerns. Pick a good time. Choose a time where you can speak to the person in private without distractions or constraints. You don't want to have to stop in the middle of a conversation because of other obligations. It's also important to have a conversation at the time of emotional calm. Don't try to have this conversation right after an, emo an emotional blow up. Explain why you're concerned. Be careful to avoid lecturing and criticizing as this will only make your loved one defensive. Instead, refer to a specific situation and behaviors that you've noticed and why they worry you. Your goal at this point is not to offer solutions, but to express your concerns about the person's health, how much and how much you love them, and your desire to help them. Be prepared for denial and resistance. There's a good chance that your loved one may deny having an eating disorder or become angry and defensive. If this happens, try to remain calm, focus, be focused and respectful. Remember that the conversation likely feel very threatening. Finally, be patient and supportive. Don't give up if the person shuts you down at first. It may be some time before they're willing to open up and admit to having a problem. The important thing is, is the most important thing is, is opening the lines of communication. 
if they're willing to talk and listen without judgment, no matter how out of touch they may sound. Make it clear that you care and that you believe in them and that you'll be there in whatever way they need, whenever they're ready. The whole reason why I picked this topic in the first place was because there isn't much media coverage and not many people know the dangers of DB. I even had a hard time to do hard time trying to research this topic. I really hope this speech could bring awareness and maybe save someone's life.